Hello, 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 and welcome to the NapoRimo special 2021. It is uh, very exciting to be back bringing you more NapoRimo nonsense. I'm going to be honest with you guys, we were not uh, expecting to still be in our houses, in our flats in Leith uh, again this year for NapoRimo, but it has worked out that way. So we thought we would take the opportunity to dive right in again and bring you NapoRimo in a big way. We've made some tweaks to how we did it last year. We're going to go over all of that in this kind of intro special. We're going to explain what we're going to be doing over the month. We're going to be chatting about last year and, and what we learned how we've kind of going to approach this differently and we're going to be sharing some of the poems from last year and maybe even some kind of revised editions to show you you know what you can take from one year and where it might be by the the, the time Napo Rimo rolls around again. Uh, I am not going to be your permanent host for this. I know that this is a kind of like version of a loudcast and I hold to the loudcast with an iron grip, but I am relinquishing my terrifying uh, control freak nature for the, the period of April only. And so I will be hosting this intro and maybe uh, another one down the line, but we're going to be rotating the host. And so what better way to kick off than by introducing my guests on the Napo Rimo special or na podcast as we're going to be tightening it to uh and your future hosts uh, i have the wonderful dr katie ailes who is a uh, poet and researcher educator academic uh, all those good things i have bex sherwood who uh, alongside being a hilarious and wonderful poet is the PR marketing genius behind all of our social media. It means we give Bex the terrible typey jobs. She's way better than us. Uh, but a phenomenal poet. I'm so excited to see what she produces with NapoRimo. We got cows last year. So this so is going to be, I mean, I'm excited to see where we go. And rounding out the quad is Mark Galley himself, the voice actor, poet, the man behind I Am Loud, behind all of our production stuff. It's uh, very exciting to have him along mark as you remember didn't post much last year he says he wrote a lot of poems but it'll be interesting to see if we actually see some of those this time around you know uh, it's, it's going to be good uh Wait, hold that grudge kev I, I am i'm definitely gonna is that how you address uh, your champion silence mark the host is speaking uh, i'm gonna <laughs> go, go around and talk to everyone and see how you're all doing uh, i'll kick off with you bex how are you keeping uh I'm from from good. last year's napa rimo yeah i'm really good i love napa rimo it's probably the only time of the year that i really write uh because i'm forced to so yeah and i love to force all of my friends to write with me and punish them if they fail I'm very much looking forward to it. It's a good way to be. It's a good way to be. Katie, how are you doing? I'm hanging in. I'm hanging in. Wow. <laughs> that was not as... <laughs> Not as enthusiastic. We're going as I for was realism on today's the podcast, yeah. Oh, but no, nice. I'm excited to write because, yeah, like Bex, uh, last <laughs> April was one of the only times that I actually wrote last year because I actually allocated myself writing time, which turns out is a really good thing to do if you market yourself as a poet. Um, so yeah, I loved last year's Naparimo as maddening as it was at times, and I'm really excited to actually do more writing. Excellent, excellent stuff. And Mr. Galley, how are you doing? Her, her. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm both very excited. I'm very scared uh, for Napo Rimo. One because I don't know how it's come around so quickly. Oh, right. um, and because yeah, again, I've just recovered from last year, so I'm very much ready to write a bunch <laughs> of stuff again. And then scared because I've got, I've got, you know. Did it every day last year. I'm, I'm the champ. There's a, there's a lot to lose. There's a lot. There's a lot on my shoulders. You know. So. I'll believe you did it every day when I see the poems and uh, not before. But, but you make a good point, Gally. It brings me on to actually explaining a bit more about this month and how we're going to approach it. Because last year, Bex, like I was saying, she is the organized loud poet. And so Bex was the kind of driving force behind Napo Rhymo last year. She was the one kind of putting prompts together and all the nice stuff we put out on Instagram with, you know, like all the kind of prompt help and doing the daily check-ins. We were supposed to split that evenly, but Bex did way more than everyone else. Uh, so... 
we decided that it'd be a good idea to, you know, with a bit more prep time and as we were realizing that we were going to be staying in lockdown, you know, through this Napo Rimo, at the start of the year, we decided to get a bit of a jump start on it. And, and Bex, you were the kind of driving force behind making it a bit more organized. Um, so what is the idea behind the way we're doing it this time? We're not doing daily, are we? No, so we are doing daily, but we want it to be uh, a little bit different. So traditionally, obviously, we didn't invent Napo Rimo. We could, we, I, I'd love to take the credit if I could, but I didn't invent it. Uh, and as the traditional form of Napo Rimo is that you do write a poem every single day in April. Now, we did that last year to varying degrees of success. I think all of us got our, po our 30 poems done eventually. Yeah. Mark's looking really chuffed forgetting that I also succeeded at Napo Rimo last year and did a poem every day. Uh, so you're not the champion. It's easy for, to forget that, Bex, because <laughs> you weren't insufferably smug about it. So, you know, it slips from the, the mind. Not, <laughs> Not online. Uh, no, no, no. It, just none of you have seen me. Um, <laughs> so this year we wanted to do something a bit different in terms of actually writing pieces that we might use again, because I don't know about everyone else, but I have 29 out of the 30 pieces I wrote last year. I haven't looked at, I didn't think were very good. I didn't really do anything with. And while that is a great resource to have as a back catalog, I am more about writing a poem and finishing it in one kind of session I'm not like a oh look at this in six months and edited it kind of girl which is the kind yeah. of girl that I am <laughs> Napa Rhino works excellent for Katie in her, yeah. her her system of collecting little bits of stuff and then weaving it into a poem I should mm -hmm. explain because we're just referring it to Napa Rhino. this might be some people's first who might have stumbled oh, yeah. into this and not know what we're talking about Napa Rhino is National Poetry Writing Month and like Beck said the idea behind it is that you're supposed to write a poem every day and I don't think they envisage you know people writing their magnum opus in a day but it's yeah, supposed it's to Iliad. be to, yeah, right? <laughs> to like force you to kind of like get those creative juices juices flowing to find ways to to write when inspiration isn't just striking you to to hone practice and maybe get some stuff you can use in the future so most people put out like daily prompts and daily ideas for for that day's writing and yeah i think after doing that last year and it kind of became a slog like I, I don't know about you guys i was super enthusiastic early on in napa rimo and and i was writing lengthy stuff and then as it pushed on and it became this, oh, I have to do this today, I have to do this today, they got shorter and shorter and more kind of, you know, perfunctory. Mark, how did, did, did you sort of find that? Are you more excited about having a week to complete like a whole thing rather than, you know, so write every day, but, but get an end product by the week? Yeah, I'm, I don't know, I'm unsure. Cause obviously I did, I had a, a similar but slightly different experience to yourself. Cause I found like, Definitely towards the end, I was writing more haikus, but there's definitely looking back over <laughs> like the uh, over the 30 days. Emergency but, haiku. <laughs> uh, yeah, it became kind of my like, oh, I can. And it was just because it was, uh, I suppose it, it felt easy in the shortest one, right? Um, but it then meant I looked back and when I like, I tried to use May, I had very big ambitions in May after last year to go, right, I'm going to catalog all of these and I'm going to like write these ones are kind of like finished as much as any are these are some ones that have got good stuff and then these are some ones that were a lot of haikus went into the last column of okay clearly this was just to kind of fill a day and meet, and meet a you know meet a quota um so I am excited to, to then be able to take the idea and be able to expand it a bit because I'm a bit getting in between Bex and Katie's thing I like having a bit but then sort of revisiting it on more of a a more frequent basis, but not over the course of a day. I find that really yeah. stressful if I feel like I have a day to, to, to finish a poem because I don't feel like any of mine are even anywhere finished. Um, so I'm excited to see what it comes to the end. I am terrified of the forms or some of the forms that we're going to use more than anything else that is an interesting point obviously katie you were the uh the sort of academic wing of return to form which if uh, viewers haven't seen it it was a really cool series we did uh where we we challenged two poets to write to the same prompt uh, using the same form and we did some accompanying workshops you know put together by katie wonderfully facilitated uh, it's a project we're super proud of you should go and check it out it's available uh, on our youtube channel if you're listening to the podcast version of this jump on there you can find us easy enough i am loud on youtube um 
Katie, what is the idea behind using the prompts? Because I think it's so nice that we're taking what was last year, you know, a, a kind of looser idea. We would throw out a word or a kind of provocation. Whereas this year we're going, no, no, let's use a form and rely on less on giving you an idea, but giving you a structure to lay your own ideas over. What? Why are we doing that this year, Kate? Yeah, so just to to lay out what we're doing, and, and Bex might be able to speak to this a bit more clearly than I can, but we're, we're giving everyone a week to write a poem in a form. Um, and so we're using the the forms that we uh, used for the return to form series. So uh, let's see if I can get all five. So concrete, golden shovel, Sestina, Shakespearean sonnet, and univocal. Yay! Might not be the right order that we're doing them in this month. Uh, it's not. It's pretty it's close though. Uh, I can run over the order that we are doing it in this month uh, for everyone. We're going to be doing concrete next week. So, well, this week we will be writing concrete. Uh, those will be finished by the, the next podcast. Uh, we're then doing golden shovel, then Shakespearean sonnet, then Sestina, and we will be rounding off April with a univocal. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, there were a number of reasons why we decided to do this. And, and again, all credit to uh, Bex. This is sort of her, her <laughs> brainchild. Um, but I think one of the reasons why we decided to do it is because often with NaPoWriMo or really with any kind of writing process, you sit and you look at a blank page and you go, how the heck do I begin, right? Um, and as we said last month, um, interestingly, when we were feeling really stuck, often we went to restricted forms for sort of inspiration because it's the sort of paradox of creativity, right? Having too much freedom can actually be really uh, constraining and difficult. And then when you suddenly go, okay, no, I have to write a Sestina, that can almost make it simpler because you have that smaller window uh, to fit through. So we decided this year that we were going to focus on form. Um, and that's in part because, yeah, we have all of these resources now. So we've just spent... Uh, January and into February, looking at return to form and looking at these various forms and providing various resources, both through examples of poets using those forms and through these long form workshops. Um, and so the hope is that for everyone watching this and taking part throughout the month, um, you can both learn something about various poetic forms that you might not have encountered before, or used before, but also that you have a little bit more of a starting point um, and that you don't feel like you're ever looking at a blank page going, what the heck do I write? Um, but going, what the heck do I write as a Sestina? <laughs> <laughs> what a difference that will make. Right. Uh, but so much easier. Obviously, you know, it, we could do a podcast every week and then come back and be like, we did a, a golden shovel. And that might not be super helpful to, to people doing it at home. So Bex, what else are we kind of putting out and where can people find that if they're looking for some help, if they're looking to, you know, kind of play along with, with the Loud Poets here? Yeah, absolutely. So unfortunately, there isn't a nice, neat five weeks in April. So we are <laughs> technically starting slightly before. I can only apologize. But it is only five weeks. Uh, every week on a Tuesday, we're going to start by sharing this than a podcast uh, and then throughout the week we'll be sharing writing and editing tips I picked Katie's brain to get some actual PhD very clever person advice on writing uh, we'll be sharing other examples the hosts of next week's uh, the podcast will be sharing a uh, concrete or a sustina or whatever form we're covering that week and you're also welcome to tweet at us facebook us instagram us if you want help if you need advice if you want us to give you some weird restricting themes we're you happy to scream do at us for the torture that we're putting yeah. you through and by all means you don't have to write these themes if you don't want to but it's just about having a look at your creative practices and the way that you write poetry in a way that's a little bit more structured but also allows time to, you know for that creative process in the beginning some people want to write poems that aren't just about okay well the word today is moon so I guess I'm writing about the moon it kind of facilitates something that would be potentially a more polished piece by the end of it because you've just had that much more time to spend on it so we're just encouraging people to write in a different way and spend some more time and care on their writing and I think that that's you know the, the kind of good plan about it and one of the nice things about uh, NaPoWriMo I have always found is that being part of that kind of group and doing it together and having other people not to like hold you accountable and be like you haven't done your thing or whatever uh, unless it's Mark who we do um, but like <laughs> I'm giving Mark such a hard time, his wee, his wee face. Uh, 
you're not making any noise that's perfect mark then none of that came through wonderful uh, oh i just was i was just saying come at me but i didn't want to interrupt oh i see, I see. <laughs> um, polite but, aggression but like doing that kind of community vibe so one thing i would say is that you know if you're if you're checking this out and you're interested in what we've kind of laid out there and taking part in napo rhino with us then the best thing you can do is follow on whatever podcast platform you're listening to uh, subscribe if you're watching the video version of this on youtube hit that like button you'll get you know pop-ups in your youtube feed when when videos come out and also check us out on facebook and twitter and instagram just search i am loud and you'll be able to see all of the tips and tricks and accompanying videos examples and all of that stuff that we're going to put out uh, and do send us your poems i would really love to see it it was so nice last year when people would kind of submit things that they'd worked on um, and i think doing it over the course of a week gives us more chance for that right because people will be more complete work that they can send us through so if you want to drop a poem in the comment below that would be amazing and we'll definitely be checking them out and if people leave them we might uh, read some out on the show we might you know chat about them on the show so that would be very cool to do um but yeah i think that's 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 a good layout right we've explained kind of vaguely what we're doing if, if you haven't, so. leave a fine. question in the comments. Below. Yeah, I'll go back to you. It's <laughs> we'll okay. clarify. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that's the approach. We're about making it fun, having a laugh with it. It's not supposed to be a big pressure thing. If you want to write something else, if you don't want to write and you just want to watch us stumble through a painful month, feel free. It'll be good times. And on that, I am kind of dreading this because I've been thinking a lot about the form, right? Because I was project manager for Return to Form, so I've been. Thinking thinking about it a lot and my main takeaway has been how happy I was that I was managing the project and not having to write in any of the forms and now I'm slightly concerned that Bex has tricked me so uh what are you guys no tricking you agreed you knew um, what this was yeah. I just agree <laughs> to stuff but I just say yes it's an easier life isn't it but um, uh <laughs> Mark what what forms stand out to you as as the ones you're maybe less looking forward to maybe more looking forward to um, so from the five, the one that I'm looking forward to least for weird, for odd reasons is the univocal. And that's just because in like back in January, I where or yeah, January when the workshops for return to form were coming out, I was watching them as I was um, doing the closed captioning for them. And it was, I was very interested by some of them because I hadn't done them. And I went, you know what? I've seen a lot of univocals. I've seen them done really well. I really like the assonance that comes out of a univocal. And I'll write one of them. And then this project's happening. So now I need to write a new one. <laughs> so because I've done one, I know the fear and the annoyance to come. Oh. Um, but I suppose weirdly, the one that I'm actually like most concerned about is maybe the one that other people are going to be the least concerned about, which is the concrete one. Because I, I know I, de I, I don't write in shapes. I, I very much, I don't want to use the word cheat, but like use that, the, the ease of free form or the ease of the restriction to write the structure so I don't have to think about that part. But then when you're adding a shape onto it, it adds a whole extra dimension. And so I'm, I'm I kind of, I don't want to do what I would consider, you know, like sort of like a more textbook one because then it's then what do you write about but then it's what shape do you use like which informs the other so i mean that's chicken and I'm... egg right it's, yeah it's absolutely i agree i think as well especially when it's easy to look at concrete and think that's a kind of easy form right so concrete for people listening or watching is when a the poem it takes a certain shape on the page that reinforces or, or references the the kind of theme or idea or, or something connected to the poem to add an extra layer that the actual layout on the page informs and and pushes whatever you're trying to do with the poem. I am dreading it as well as I am all of them because <laughs> I am not a visual artist. I have no I like I I don't really I'm stick men and and like block houses. You know what I mean? Uh, Bex, as someone who you you dabble in kind of visual art, right? You've recently over lockdown, you've taken up uh, doing a lot of drawing. I'm very yeah. excited. We do a role play game, and Bex has been making lots of like <laughs> art for it. It's it's amazing. Um, are are you are you quite confident about concrete? Well, yeah, uh, I'm quite confident about everything because when you've written <laughs> when you've written twenty plus variations of cow poetry. You kind of have to learn to embrace 
difference and challenge. I'm, I'm really not scared for any of them. I am just excited about them. I, not, I don't think they're going to be easy. I think they are going to be really annoying. And I'm sure this time next week, probably not next week because I'm hosting and I'll be too busy being jazzed about being the centre of attention. Uh, but maybe <laughs> in two weeks when we're talking about, you know, the golden shovel or whatever, I will be not feeling so confident about it. But at the moment, I feel pretty positive. I, I've been doing a bit more visual art, so I'm really looking forward to kind of sharing some more things that I can do graphically um, and just any other skills that I have. But I've been doing, I've always done kind of printed art. It's only recently that I've made an investment into something that allows me <laughs> to do it digitally. Um, so, you know, it, there's I just because you don't have like a fancy iPad or whatever, I think it's just important to remember, use whatever you, you have. You have a, a, a thing on your camera, you can do stuff with that. Like, you can do stuff in person. I've seen some really great stuff that's been made with like new, out of newspapers and cool things like that in concrete. Um, so just, it's a really good opportunity to like get creative and truly get out of your comfort zone in a concrete poem because it isn't, you, you can't really just sit with a Word document in your chair with a nice cup of tea. Like you have to get active and use your hands. I mean, it's, it's good. Well, obviously, Mark bringing up concrete there, and that's some really like interesting insight into it, thinking kind of outside the box of like, because I think of it very like that, right? Like it needs to look like a thing. So while we're kind of on concrete, because that is uh, what we're going to be setting this week, guys. So if you're watching this uh, or listening to it, concrete poetry is your challenge and uh, we are we, by the by the next one we are all going to be sharing our concrete poems uh, it's it's going to be cool katie could you explain to us a bit about like a, maybe a better explanation than i have given there of what concrete poetry is and how you could maybe approach it if you're if like bex was saying getting a bit less you know oh it needs to be a drawing or you know a very nice piece of art and more conceptual about it yeah, absolutely. I think that the explanation that you gave is really, really good. Basically, it's a form of poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like you project managed an entire series on form, Kev. I um, read what you wrote about concrete poetry a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, effectively, it's a form of poetry in which the visuals are just as important to constituting the meaning as the text. Um, so if it's just a poem on the page, normally lineated as it would be, that's not a concrete poem. It has to, in some way, be influenced by the visual layout of the poem. Um, and I think one of the reasons, because I share, you know, Mark's perspective, Mark's like fear around concrete poetry. I think one of the reasons why it is so scary is that it it is sort of infinite there's infinite potential in terms of what you do with concrete unlike um it's sort of like the opposite of a shakespearean sonnet where it's so restricted and all of them are going to look kind of the same and take the same meter and have the same rhyme scheme um concrete poetry can take so many different forms um one of the examples that I, I reference in my workshop, um, Scotland has this incredible tradition of concrete poetry. And there is a poet called Ian Hamilton Finlay who has a garden called Little Sparta um, out in the Pentlands out, outside of Edinburgh. And there are 270 pieces of concrete poetry set around this garden. And a lot of them are sculptures. One of them is a bridge right? One of them is a sundial. And so when we talk about concrete poetry, we don't just mean 2D uh, visuals where the poem takes the shape of a concept. We can also mean like a hunk of stone with some text in it that forms meaning in an interesting way. And Everyone so, get your chisels out for this week. <laughs> right? I was right. like, Mark's going to go weird. I know he's going to show up with some sort of sword with like engraved on the blade. Yeah, I yeah. would suggest maybe watching the YouTube one next week since we will be talking about visual art poetry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to get weird, but but this is, you know, both the exciting and I think slightly intimidating thing about concrete poetry is that there are so many ways of approaching it from the sort of fundamental way where, um, like we showed in the Return to Form videos, for example, Stuart Kenny's poem Kirketten is a poem flipped on its side that takes the uh, shape of Kirketten, which is a, a hill or mountain. I'm not entirely sure still, Stuart can correct me, in the Pentlands. Oh, he big, will. Big mass of earth in the Pentlands. Um, so so that way is is the sort of more literal way of doing it where, where the poem visually takes that shape, but then you can also get really experimental and funky and weird. And, and it's great because there are so many different ways of going about it. So I think with this week and all of us exploring concrete poetry, um, 
we'll hopefully come up with a, a real weird diversity of stuff. Should be nice. fun. Nice. So yeah, if you want to join in, we're all going to be tackling concrete poetry. Uh, there's going to be a video coming out on Thursday, which will be Bex uh, doing uh, some concrete poetry for Me? you. I'm very excited <laughs> to see what form that takes. Maybe it won't be a video. Maybe she'll chuck a brick through your window. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> my idea, Kevin. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be, yeah, if you subscribe to this channel, Bex will come to your house with a brick. Uh, you get arrested no, no, doing that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rimo, you get extra points. I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah, yeah. You get this less bricks off the rails if you almost subscribe. Immediately. I fewer thought it would bricks, take at least Mark, a fewer week. bricks. Fewer bricks. <laughs> <laughs> regardless uh, yeah it's so check that out to get some some uh sorry insight into how to approach it um and kate like we said we'll be posting some stuff out on twitter and facebook uh references for you tips and tricks all that jazz so please do join in and we will have a concrete poetry bonanza next week with bex at the helm it's going to be good fun but i thought it'd be nice to talk uh kind of reflectively about last year's napo right as we get prepped what have we learned what are we going to do differently what are we going to do the same like what have we learned from the poems we did last time have we looked at them all that good stuff i know because we had a little chat about this before because i dusted off my napo rhymo folder today and went oh wow uh, but i think bex and mark both of you have like looked at your stuff through the year and i know bex specifically because uh you released cows one of your poems right was like you made the pamphlet yeah right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So on day four or something, I think it was, uh, we I wrote a cow poem, as I am one to do. Uh, and I wrote it in a couple of hours and a version of it has ended up in my uh, my debut pamphlet, Poetry for Cows, available in wherever fine books are sold slash joking only on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you would you mind would you mind reading it for yeah, us? Yeah, so what I'm gonna cool, do, I'll, right? I'll read the first version, which is gonna be very weird because I'm now much more used to the heavily edited, much improved, uh, more grammatically correct, thematically consistent, and generally uh, improved uh, version. But I will read you the rubbish version first, so that you can applaud me about how fantastic I am and how much better I've done now. Nice, nice. Uh, and it's called Dragons Exist Because Cows. Upon a night, alone and cold, a legend stemmed to be retold. When cowherds watching them were weary, and drew to dark could not see clearly, across the fields all cold and bare would light a fire to see them there. Their cows, I mean, who'd often gather, and foolish cowherds would then blather of beasts at night with fangs and claws who could breathe fire out their jaws. As when the cowherds looked at night, they saw dark shapes that gave them frights, and in their tired and nervous state would look beyond their wooden gate. Frightful shapes at night allow the mind to see more than a cow, but science since has now explained that putting methane to a flame would cause the gas to then ignite and lighten up these darker nights. But for a cowherd with no learning would find sights like this that concerning and in their fright would create a demon to secure their fate. They would turn to friends and warn and thus the mighty dragon was born. Nice, nice, nice. I remember you doing that one during Naparimo and I was very annoyed because it was... It felt way more <laughs> polished than a day's work. I didn't like it. It, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to feel like you you don't know how to write, oh, hire no. Katie Ailes yep. as your editor. She <laughs> is a, a brutal but wonderful editor uh, who really assisted in the... Now I read that version of the poem and I can see... You know, it's it's only with reflection and time and taking a different approach and a step back to look at something that you have made from a subjective mindset, which we're hoping to facilitate by giving you a week instead of a day. Um, can you see where things can be improved? Because when you write some things, sometimes you're like, this is the best thing that was ever written. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be so, this is going to go viral. Everyone's going to love this. And then you look at it a day later and it's like, well, okay, maybe not. But you know, you want to facilitate having that time. Um, so I, I did spend quite a lot of time with Katie uh, working on Dragons Exist Because Cows, but entirely that idea, the poem itself and everything was stemmed just from a, oh my God, I've got to write something in two hours. Let's just write this weird cow legend. So, so why did that one stand out to you as something to develop later for the for the book? Uh, it, it, because it had cows in it. No, uh, <laughs> 
I, 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 it, Dragon, the, the idea of this has been something that I've been obsessed with for like a really long time. I was told this is like an urban legend when I was at university that the reasons people thought dragons were real was because cows would all gather together for warmth near a fire and then when they would fart it would be like a big fireball. I, do, I still to this day do not know whether this is correct historically accurate in any way whether it's just like an urban myth that's like you know if you go on urbandictionary.com it's like with all the other weird meme <laughs> things from like 2001 um but yeah i was just very i i personally really liked the idea it was quite different from everything else i'd written because i don't tend to write with quite a, a structured rhyme um and it was, and I, as it turned out, it wasn't that structured, but it needed to be very structured. I think it was like a five. What was it? What was the technical name for the meter? Uh, it's either iambic tetrameter or pentameter. I can't remember. Calls oh, herself uh, yeah. a PhD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the the good thing is you had. You are someone who's a very good performer, and so you have a clear sense when you perform lines of the meter. So you had the meter. It was just fixing little sections and fiddling with them to make the language clear, but also to make the meter perfect, which mm -hmm. isn't necessary when you're writing, right? And we'll probably yeah. get to Shakespeare and Sonnet Week, and you know, I'll be a taskmaster going, it has to be perfect, and you'll all go, no, Katie, it's fine form is there to be abused i'm gonna just um, take this i'm gonna take that clip of you saying that and use that as my get out of jail oh free God. card for the Why rest are we of this recording project. this <laughs> but i think it's a good point to make that like you know the the idea of setting form and stuff isn't to be like and if you don't nail it you're a failure like it's it's to give you a bit of a map to work towards you know what i mean to be like okay this is how i'm, I'm gonna approach it if you then change your mind and go oh i like this idea but you know i don't want to do it as a sistina then don't you know what i mean like it's fine <laughs> uh, and i think i think yeah that's... i won't come to your house with bricks <laughs> maybe i will Bex, do, do you want to give us do you want to give us the updated yeah, so edited, I'll, I'll, so this the is pristine the, version the pristine version that can be found in my debut pamphlet poetry for cows available on etsy okay i won't plug anymore i'm sorry right so dragons exist because cows Upon a night alone and cold, a legend born to be retold. At their post, cow herds were weary, through the dark could not see clearly. Across the fields, all cold and bare, so they'd light fires to see them there. Around the flames, the cows would stay, and weary cow herds' minds would stray, see beasts at night with fangs and claws, who could breathe fire out their jaws. So when the cow herds looked at night, they saw dark shapes that gave them fright, and in their tired and nervous state would look beyond their wooden gate, as all shapes at night allow the mind to see more than a cow but since then science has explained that putting methane to a flame would cause the grim grass to ignite and brighten up these gloomy nights but cow herds with no way to learn find these sites cause for great concern and in their terror they create a demon to secure their fate later over mead-filled flagons cow herds would tell tales of dragons nice 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 yeah yeah and i think you can see it's just like it's the meter there's literally just some little... of the same verses yeah, entirely yeah. in that a lot I... of it wasn't changed yeah or just like a word was changed but yeah yeah I, I, the gr a grim gas to ignite i remember particularly it being we we went through probably about 12 different oh versions God, yeah. of that line it's just like with how the... do we poetically describe a fart yeah in that was literally meter. how how do we correct in a iambic pentameter fully rhyming cow poem explain a fart without it being the word fart yeah. when i was young and dreamed of working in poetry this is what i envisioned <laughs> L literally so you know sylvia plath never had to put up with this <laughs> she might have <laughs> amazing she should stuff. have <laughs> yeah, just, amazing stuff thanks amazing stuff i hope there's more cow stuff coming this napa rain we'll i don't know i'm kind of i've kind of moved beyond cows i've been saying for cows. a while uh i want to be going into my like political poetry phase so i like one or two poems i've written recently have actually been horror poems so uh maybe so excited maybe so yeah maybe it will be like cannibalism for cows instead i don't know probably not don't, don't do not from that. Katie's no. horrified expression. I don't want that. I don't Especially think it's going to be that. I really don't okay. want to know where that Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay. To... Maybe there may be cows, but I also, well, you know, anyone is welcome to challenge me to my crown of the cow poet of Edinburgh. If they so wish to write poems about cows, oh, it's a fantastic subject. 
Andrew Blair has a whole new motivation in life <laughs> to him if he's so cheesy. Robert Pattinson as a cow. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Mark, I know as well you you've been someone who's who's edited bits and pieces. You've like you found Naparemo useful, right? Like there was there was stuff came out of it for you. Uh yeah, because that I, that was that had been kind of my 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 plan with Naparemo at the start when I was young and full of dreams. Um <laughs> that I would do that I would write every day and I was going and would stick to it. And then I would use May to, you know, to relook at them all. So, and I probably kept to, it's amazing. I managed to keep, keep, keep to Napo Rimo, but then not to like the May cleanup of it. <laughs> to the very next day. No to more. The very, but I did, cause I was, cause I was looking through them. And one of the things that I think I'm really excited about this Napo Rimo over uh, last Napo Rimo is cause I found last time when it was 30 days and we had like, with prompts and things like that, you have like sort of a subject matter. Obviously you don't have to stick to, but you, you, it then becomes what's the, you know, what's the content that you're putting in rather than with this. Um, and then it's kind of like once that day is done, obviously I find a lot of them go, we well, have to get this sort of like done in the day and then move on the immediate next day. So you have to like new idea, a new thing. And so with this one, having a week to then be able to be a bit more, okay, looking through things and a bit more, I suppose this one is going to be more encouraging to finish poems rather than necessarily get them started, which then was why maybe it was difficult because I was just burned out from doing new ones. Um, but yeah, I did. I went when I went through. There were a couple that you know that kind of grabbed me, um, particularly one that I I, I won't read because we just we put a video out of it the other week. My sort of like every day, which I guess just one of those ones that that just became the title. Um, which was just me sat, it was day 15, it was slap bang in the middle of Napo Rimo, and I was just having a, a slump staring out my window and went, just write about this. And that was what came from that. And because I was trying to look at ways to make videos as well, to kind of like, kind of then have a visual element I could incorporate with the poetry, that the time-lapse of that view out the window came from it. So that, that's the one I sort of did the most with. But I mean, that sort of goes to show, isn't it? That was in the middle of Napo Rimo last year, and we released the video of that you know, a week ago or something. And that's <laughs> why I've just finished that. So it's taking me a whole, a whole year to get to it. So I'm. And, and it's interesting when it, because then you're adding, you know, your 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 cross art form then, right? Mm -hmm. So that like it's you, the the poem. How much has the poem changed since you wrote it? Well, it's definitely got longer. And this is why, again, why I'm really excited for this one is having things to go, to be able to go back and look at stuff. Because a lot of the things that then went into this, you know, the longer version, some of the phrases, I found like my day, or like one of the early days, like day two or something like that, I didn't necessarily like it all, but had a line, the final line of the poem, the, a broken shell to a hermit crab is a home. And that's from a I totally different poem. Line. But I was like, ooh, I sort of did, I did what Katie said with going panning for gold, but over all of them. So with this one, it'll be quite nice to kind of have a lot of like a lot of content or a lot of ideas and a lot of, you know, seeds, but then having the form restrict and go, right, here's your form. Here's what it sort of has to be. And so the content of it's less, it's still obviously very important, but it's thinking in a different way. So I think why concrete's the one that scared me more because it's then a third element other than just getting something on the page, which is... I mean, it provokes an interesting idea to yeah. me, which is to potentially take something that is conceptually nice from last year something that i'm like that was there's a real nugget of something there but i didn't have time and try and use that theme maybe some of the wording or language and put it into one of the other forms that could potentially be you know a, a nice challenge to kind of set oneself uh mm, very Ooh. insightful mark i like it i like it can i can i ask katie a question don't if you dare bring up helen of troy <laughs> I did you swear know? to God. How did you know? Sorry. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to know. For for those who were not present at NapoRimo last year, I did a stupid thing. And um halfway through, I got really interested in the myth of Helen of Troy. And I just went absolutely nuts researching her, watching everything I could find with Helen of Troy in it, and wrote literally uh, hundreds not hundreds of pages that's a lie but like 30s of pages of work <laughs> about Helen of Troy I have so much so many documents so many different ideas about her and never finished a bit of it um 
yeah so but in we're terms all excited of, for your helen of troy sestina this year genuinely then, given, thinking about it so, so one of the choices that i'm gonna oh have God. to make one of the choices i'm gonna have to make is is do i pick that stuff up and do i keep developing it or do i save it for a theoretical one day katie's solo show at the fringe all about helen of troy <laughs> which no one will go see um <laughs> five stars but, five stars hey uh yeah we'll have to see i might pick it up but but that's sort of an illustration because i spent so much time working on a single concept and then it would be 11 25 p.m and i will have spent four hours that day working on helen of troy and gone well crap i have no finished poem to post on instagram and then just write a haiku yeah <laughs> which had nothing to do with helen of troy so i got i i, I spent my energies in the wrong place oh, yeah. and well, so this year i'm looking forward to having a week on each poem so that i can actually well you get can spend four hours to research helen of troy because yep. you've got a week i've done That'd all the great. research Bex. i know too oh, much yeah. <laughs> I just well, i'm, I'm, I'm interested to see if we end up with some uh helen of troy uh poetry but mark would you like to uh, share something from last year with us yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think I think so. I guess I'm I'm sharing this one, and I um, because it's not one that I initially wrote last time, but it was literally it was one that I got from a seed from like day twenty five. And I guess this would be my my main piece of advice going forward is because I made it when I first looked at this. This was in the no column. And I was like maybe just um, advice for everyone, but also advice to myself is just maybe don't be so, so dismissive of your own stuff. Like Make it a the, not yet column. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> to at, at least read, you know, like <laughs> at least read through. Um, because this is one I wasn't the the actual days one I didn't really like. Um, but this one that then came from it, um, I'm a bit of a fan of. So uh just pull that over here. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> I guess it's different when you pay the bills. I used to wonder why dad would bring the thrill of running round the house to an end with the ring of who keeps leaving the lights on? I wondered why so serious? I get not being scared of the dark, but he hated every left on light, radiator running, door open, letting the heat out with suction akin to explosive decompression, apparently. <laughs> it left an impression regardless of intention. We were just running from zombie wizard pirates. And while closing the door might have bought us a second or two, at that point, it wasn't important. The house would be warm again. We would still need the lights. To fight the monsters that hid inside our home would grab a leg not shielded by bed covers right behind you coming up the stairs. I never looked. Wasn't worth the risk. But it turns out it's the same when you pay the bills. The shadows just get faster. There you go. Nice. Very oh, cool. Oh, that's very a, cool. Oh, that final line. Yeah, I do I do I, do, I don't remember that from last year. Is that is that oh. one of the secret ones we didn't get to see? Uh, yeah, it's one of the many no one got to read. <laughs> and so that's why, because I was so because that's why I didn't post a bunch, because I was so very self-conscious about what I was gonna put out and that you know the, the challenge was to write a poem. So, you know, on the days where it was a struggle, and I'm like, that's not really a poem, or that's an mm. idea of just like don't but even if it was something like that not being as dismissive about it there's there's good stuff in there and there's ways no i know i give it. you a hard time mark about your not posting poems but like you know if you, don't feel for for people you know watching and listening you know you don't need to post all your stuff like poems to, are, aren't necessarily always for publication we have a laugh because we set each other ridiculous challenges and stuff but like it's not about producing a bunch of complete work and i think that's a really good illustration of like things you might doubt in the immediate aren't necessarily bad you know i mean your your headspace and your view of it or what you've just heard someone else you know like if i sit and watch shane koizan all night and then read one of my poems immediately after it i want to crawl into the ground but like <laughs> but you know that's that you can't then let that totally affect your your creative process so i think that's really good because that's a, that's an amazing piece that's so interesting and like it conjures themes of of you know the Joker is that like an origin story type thing because of that line and things like that. It's like there's a real interest in hook to that kind of poem. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's really thank cool. you. That's, that's, yeah, but that's 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 my made of an advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't don't be don't be too. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, yeah don't beat yourself up. The point of it is not, and it's it's 
said so often, like, the point is to not finish and have these, Your ma- this is not by the end of the month you have to have your magnum opus. I mean, I think over the course of this year, we very much learned that you don't, even if, you know, you've got the time and the challenge, just just doing a little is better than not doing any because you're overwhelmed by the pressure of it. Get a little in there. Nice, nice. Well, oh. Kate, <laughs> we, we, uh, we've, we've discussed a little that, I mean, we're all very disappointed that we didn't get that uh, second PhD on Helena Troy. Um, <laughs> what was your kind of takeaway from NaPoRimo? Was there useful stuff that came out of it for you? There was actually, which was really nice. Um, I will just bring up, I just found the Word document where I was working on Helen and it is 32 pages long and 7,444 words. <laughs> You're a maniac. No uh, one time for that to read it. like you do, Katie. That's nope. incredible. <laughs> nope. Uh, Amazing. So if anyone wants to know anything about Helen or Troy or get a lot of disconnected metaphors. Maybe I'll covered. write a Helen or Troy poem so you can't. <laughs> I'll just write cows from from here on in, um, but yeah. So apart from my weird obsession, um, no, it was I. I loved Naparima last year, as challenging as it was, because um, for a number of reasons. The first being that I think last March was obviously, and last April, um, last April was the first full month that we were in lockdown, and it was incredibly different. And we were all going through something unprecedented in our lifetimes. And um, I having the the sort of opportunity and pressure to write about it really helped me process it. Um, and I look back now at some of the work that I wrote, not not everything that I wrote was about lockdown, but several of the pieces were. And I look back now at the work that I wrote about it, and I go, wow, this, I didn't fully understand some of the poems at the time, but now I, I do, I sort of get the, the subtext of them. And I was processing things that, um, were really important for me to be processing. Um, and I think that without getting too artsy fartsy, you know, poetry can be a way of our, our, uh, or any kind of grim creative grassy, ex- I think is what you mean. No, <laughs> gr- grim and grassy. Yeah. <laughs> grim gas, uh, cow farts. Uh, but yeah, poetry, poetry can be a way of, and, and any creative expression can be a way of our, our subconscious and, and our sort of whatever, I'm not a psychologist, but like our, our mind filtering things that, that our conscious mind doesn't. Um, and so that was really helpful, but also just in terms of writing every day and, and sort of being creative in that way um, was such a great way of, of coping with the weirdness of lockdown. Um, a lot of what I wrote, I didn't use, not just the Helen stuff, but also just, uh, there's some not great things. Um, but some of it I did. So I, I wrote a poem called This Poem Will Be Funded, uh, which <laughs> was because we were also developing a funding application during that NaPoRimo. And so I was spending so much time with the language of funding applications um, that when it came time to write my poem, I wrote it in the language of a funding application and vented some frustration. Um, and that's a video that's now up on our YouTube channel. Um, and then I wrote a few other pieces that uh, I've not had a lot of gigs this year as I think most poets will uh relate to but some of them I have shared at gigs and one of them got published in gutter which was really lovely um so some of the work has had a life beyond Naparimo, which is great um that's about like no I've not had anything really I just poems, had something but... published gutter, yeah. no I just published during <laughs> in lockdown gutter. in gutter as well not even just like random stuff <laughs> Sorry, no, we're all so so annoyed at Kate. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I should say as well, one of the reasons I'm really excited for what we're doing for this Naparimo is um, I feel like like this is like a dirty thing to share. Not dirty, but like yeah. not good thing to share. In the workshops for Return to Form, for those people who have watched the workshops, I write you through examples um, and I, or, or rather I take you through exercises and I write alongside you. So I sort of do an example poem with you. Um, and initially my plan had been, right, I'm going to finish these example poems and, you know, really do something with them. And then just because of time constraints and various other things, I never finished those example poems. Um, so I started all these poems to, to show how to write a Sestina or a sonnet and then never, they remain unfinished. Um, so I might actually try to finish some of those. 
Um, oh, so you're going to cheat. You're that's cheat. interesting. You have that's, written cool. that's, about, that's a nice approach. I can't <laughs> use a univocal I've written before, but you go, oh, I guess it's if they're half finished. Yeah, yeah, that's an exciting well, I mean, approach. What poem's ever finished? So I guess mine's not done yet. So well, no, it was, it's fine as long as you the use break. the themes you did in the example poems in a different form. So you can use your sonnet only if you turn it into a univocal. Because then it counts as panning for gold rather than completing an unfinished. That's already very true. Full, already this is getting form. so meta. Yes, I love it and hate it. I, I you know, well, I've got to well... be very specific in my terminology. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to be fussy. <laughs> while Kate considers how best to cheat uh, this month, uh, Kate, do you have uh, a poem you'd like to share with us from last Naporimo? I do. Um, so, rather than reading thirty-two pages of uh, Greek <laughs> rubbish, check out the Nap Podcast Extra over on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nope. yes. twelve hours long, uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I figured I figured I would do this poem. Um, so, as I said, I, I got some that I shared, but this isn't one that I've done much with. Um, because it's not, I don't want to say an inside joke, but but it sort of relies a little bit on some knowledge. So uh, Kev is currently wearing a wrestling t-shirt. If you have listened to any episode of The Loudcast, you will know that Kev is a massive wrestling fan. And one of the things that Lockdown has done is um, I have watched more wrestling uh, and enjoyed it. And uh, we won't get into that too much, but you know, every podcast that we release has to mention wrestling and also because kev um one of the things that may have baffled the viewers of the loud cast is kev's uh increasingly long hair uh kev has has changed uh he he began physically mentally emotionally <laughs> i've know, changed as you do uh but you you started lockdown uh Bald. I'll let you explain. Yeah, bald, and because I normally I I would shave my head before gigs. That was how I I existed. And so we did our last gig, our birthday gig in February at the storytelling center. I shaved my head that night, or or maybe it was uh, Birmingham for uh, Verve. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but either way, I shaved my head in February, and then we went into lockdown, and I just was like, oh, I just will shave my head again when it comes back round. It's now been over a year, and I have a ponytail, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it, that's been glorious. One, because, and I won't spend too much time talking about it, but because Kev has the most perfect ginger ringlets and I love them to bits. Um, but also because, weird. yep. Uh, also because Kev used to be a wrestler. Uh, and all of Ish. this as introduction to say that last Naparimo, I wrote a poem about Kev wrestling, which I've never seen because you stopped wrestling before we met. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to share that because it's some it's it's one that i've not right. shared much so you could talk fun. about my perfect ringlets i get yes. it i get it. <laughs> yeah yeah you know subtext um <clears throat> it's called brood acre because that was your name i can't remember I, you've heard this before right yeah yeah but i'm i've for, for gauze it's uh, coming back of a wave of painful uh <laughs> shame here we go um cool Cleaning under our bed yesterday, I dragged out the dusty blue duffel full of your old wrestling gear. The faded black lace-up boots and stretched out red singlets stiff with dried sweat, wrinkled and musty. I wish I could have seen you then. Not, you, not known you, we wouldn't have gotten on. But watched from the crowd as you stomped in snarling to some generic rock song tinny on the loudspeakers, your frizzy flaming mane damp and dripping. I can picture you rolling under the bottom rope and rising to stand boastful at the turnbuckle, giving the finger to the pissed off crowd. Your opponents got the glory, baby faces soaked in praise while you, brute heel, were booed. You'd have let it fuel you, would have smirked back as you smacked the hero's face into the mat, pinning him to wriggle and gasp until he finally tapped out. Since childhood, you'd worshipped those massive two-tanned gods through your TV each Monday night, wrapped to their dramatic parables, love, betrayal, burial, resurrection. And so you became them, playing out the American dream in some dingy West Lothian community center where the performers assembled the ring before every show. Sometimes 
if I ask and ask, you'll hoist me over your shoulders, a rag doll in your sturdy hands and suplex me into the sofa to giggle hysterically. It's a crude echo of how it's meant to go with partners who'd lift themselves up to be thrown, pressing off you and projecting themselves into the mat, rolling and groaning. Those days, you'd act to your body a hard weapon while softening blows, cradling necks, whispering agreements in loose chokeholds, improvising this delicate violence. You knew how to make a punch feel like a bad kiss. I'd love for just a moment to go back, buy a cheap pint, take my plastic seat ringside and my voice drowning in the jeering crowds, mischievously cheer the baddie to victory. Amazing. It will, it will never, there, are, there are things that bug me in life. Uh, the three biggest out of them is that you judged the anti-slam with Colt Cabana, the big <laughs> show follows you on Twitter, and now that you have written a better wrestling poem than me. <laughs> Stop <laughs> this now. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful stuff that's re really beautiful like wrestling is one of those things it's interesting because i uh briefly uh on an upcoming episode of the loudcast we were rab florence as a guest and he hosts uh uh a podcast with Grado about wrestling, uh, wrestling daft. And uh, it could be kind of, like, of course, I've crowbarred it into the loudcast. And he had a very similar reaction, which is like, if you love storytelling and like creative narrative, how do you not love wrestling? It's like, it's the best. Yeah, very nicely done, Kay. Uh, very cool stuff. And I'm excited to see what everyone produces uh, over the course of the next uh, few weeks. It's going to be a wild ride. As we said, next week we will be taking a look at the concrete poetry that we've all put together. Uh, Midweek there'll be a release from Bex. Do tune into the Facebook and Twitter to keep up with all the tips and tricks and all that stuff. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform, we'd really appreciate it if you could rate and review. If you could follow the Loudcast and get all of the awesome podcast material we release. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell icon, and you'll get a notification whenever we release any of our videos. And we release a bunch of really cool stuff, so, so do check that out. Um, but for this kind of intro episode that's that's pretty much us a wrap it was very uh exciting to get prepped for an excuse Island. me mr yeah, mclean yeah, yeah. Um, i was trying I to do like... it for time but I, i'm glad you guys have interrupted it and broken <laughs> no, that absolutely flow. Not. Uh, so i will do a, a poem as we close out uh which is uh <laughs> to to start us off my one from last year is a is a beginning it is time to write no more tea brewing or plate cleaning. No more Twitter scrolling or email reading. It is time to write. No more playlists or Pinterest. No more subreddits or side quests. It is time to write. No more bread to bake. No more calls to make. No reason in the world to wait. It is time to write. Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. It is time to write. <laughs> guys <laughs> this is the start of the nap podcast special the napo rhymo special 2021 we're so excited please join in and we will see you again this time next week everybody say goodbye, goodbye. Bye. Bye. thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it we'd appreciate it if you could hit the like button if you could hit the subscribe button and make sure to ring that bell icon so you don't miss any updates from us in the future if you want to go that extra mile and support us a little further, we do have a Patreon channel with loads of exclusive goodies and you can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. We appreciate your help, guys, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.